Hello and welcome to episode 25 as I, of the series as I build my way through the Battle Games of Middle Earth magazines. In this episode, I'm going to be building fortress walls. Uh, as we move away from the open plains of Rohan, where we did the Palisades last month, to more solidly prepared positions. They, I think that it's going to be in a couple of months worth of builds in this series, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. A lot of fun. I've been reading ahead and I'm really looking forward to doing these builds. I did go into last month feeling quite excited and then it ended up being a little bit of a struggle at times because of the, uh, uh, the instructions I didn't read enough and I wasn't paying as much attention to them as I should have done. So I'll try to be a little bit more focused this month. But anyway, let's uh, get down to it. Let's have a look at the uh, magazine. I really hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to comment if you do, or if you don't, or if you just want to have a chat, I do reply to every comment. Uh, and uh, as I say, thanks for watching. So let's get stuck in. All right then, fortress, walls and towers. The strength of any stronghold lies in its walls. Archers line the battlements, raining arrows, stone and burning pitch down upon the attackers. In this modelling workshop, we start to build a great fortress, <laughs> beginning with the walls and towers. So, you need five centimetre or two inch thick polystyrene, felt tip pen, masking tape, polystyrene ceiling tiles, hot wire cutter, PVA glue, cocktail sticks, um, two and a half centimetres or one inch thick pink styrene, thin card, the modelling saw, scissors, modelling wire, needle nose pliers, wooden barbecue skewers, black texture paint and a bunch of other paints. So that's what it says for the instructions and the destructions. Um, what it says as well on the top right, which I will now read, is something which I don't do very often, which is a plan. <laughs> the easiest and most convenient way to make a model fortress is to construct it in sections. This makes it more practical to store, as well as giving you more options when laying it out on the battlefield. Like all modular terrain, it helps if you plan. <laughs> now, long-term viewers will know planning is not my strong point when I'm coming to terrain. I wing it like a winger. Anyway, we'll see what we have. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Plan out the sections you intend to make first. We decided to build six long wall sections, two small wall sections, four corner towers and a gatehouse. The gatehouse is a more involved project which will be covered in pack 29, which I believe is the next one. Uh, the fourth corner tower will be a larger one and will be covered in pack 31. As you can see, there's quite a lot of content coming up. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to attempt to plan and I will show you what happens. Um, I probably will end up getting bored and just going for it because that's how I work. Um, so, uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, well, I'll give a go at planning and working out what materials I need. And then when I've done that, I'll bring you along. Um, it's a awesome build. It's pages. So you've got, first of all, the curtain walls. Then we've got corner towers and then adding details and painting so it's a it's a really involved modeling workshop this time and i'm really looking forward to it so i hope that you'll put you'll build along i hope that you will give it a go as well um, and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out okay so i've done a little bit of planning my concession to planning i'm going to build basically the exact thing that they described it, was, it looks good and uh, i do like to follow the instructions so what i need is and i might my my planning is on this bit of paper here. So I need six 300 millimeter wide sections or however wide um, this is. Uh, this is actually 600 wide. So it's actually going to be half of that. Um, and then I need two at 150. So this, uh, if, if we read later on, what they suggest that you do is that you clad the walls with these so you get the stone texture which is quite a nice way of doing it um, I don't mind doing that um, and the other thing to point out is that I actually have no five centimeter thick polystyrene this is ten centimeters and this is going to be very cool with the proxon because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out at ten centimeters height ish which is how high it says to do the walls and then I can split that in half at five centimeters and I'm going to get two sections out of this five this ten centimeter thick um, polystyrene um, if you don't have a Proxon, uh, why not get one? They are an inv incredible investment and very, very cool. But make sure you get the Shifting Lands um, guides as well, at least the fence. But what it suggests, and let me just go to the magazine and read what it says. Achieving a straight cut in thick polystyrene can be tricky. Yes, it can if you don't have a Proxon. To get around this, we use pieces of masking tape to reinforce the markings on the wall. And then you can run down the side of the tape with a hot wire cutter and that 
apparently works. Now I've not tried it because I have the Prox on and if you've got it, use it, why wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the Prox on and I will you know, I'll put the camera on for a bit um, and I will mark out and then cut each of the sections I need. So as we've established, I can cut out uh, a 30, a 60 centimeter one from this, cut it in half and split it and that'll be four sections. And then I need to cut another section out um, as well. So I should be able to get everything I need out of this one block, which is really good because I don't have any more. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. Let's, uh, let's get cutting. So that was a relatively frustrating period. Managed to get them perfectly to width, but the Proxon, uh, as awesome as it is, it doesn't do lengths like 30 centimeters or whatever at all. So what I tried to do was use a new tool that I bought, which I've never used before, and it hasn't worked how I want it to. It's quite an expensive hot wire cutter. Um, I bought it for the model railway, and it just didn't go through. Now I'm wondering if I used it wrong, but the instructions are all in German, and my German is non-existent. So what you can see is these are just not fit for purpose. Um, they're all different lengths. They're not square. Um, I'm not gonna throw this away because I better use it, however, for something else, however, that is not six lengths at 300 mil. None of them are at 300 mil, and that is not two lengths at 150. Neither of them are 150, and they're not square, and it's just bad. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna not get too down about it, because this is what it's like sometimes. You make mistakes, and you, and you roll and rock and roll. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop for the evening. It's getting quite late, um, and I'm gonna come back tomorrow with another idea of how to do this, and hopefully I will have enough polystyrene. If I don't, I'll have to go to the shop and get some more. Uh, so yeah, just thought I'd put this clip in, uh, in, in the uh, interest of being absolutely honest. Uh, you live and learn, and this time has not worked. What I might be able to do is, um, is get the, that other hot wire cutter working. I've emailed the uh, manufacturer, and maybe that will allow me to make use of it, because it's certainly on their video, it makes it look really easy, and it looks like it's going to work fine. But it didn't work for me, so maybe I've done something wrong. Anyway, I'll be back. I will have a go at this again and I'll bring you along for it, but there we are. That is uh, basically going to have to be used for another project. So I went to the shop and I've picked up some more white foam, some more just expanded polystyrene. This is six centimetre, not five centimetres, um, and I'm going to give this another go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of the technique that they describe in the magazine. I'm going to mark it out, I'm going to put some tape, and I'm going to cut it using my Proxon. That's my plan anyway. So hopefully I'll end up with, um, with some good size and correctly cut wall sections this time. Um, I will bring you along for that process. I just wanted to show this, uh, <laughs> this is how I buy my materials. This costs about 10 GBP. Uh, it's very, very cheap here, which is really, really nice. It's one of the, one of the benefits of being here is just how cheap insulation is. So yeah, uh, <laughs> round two, let's see if I can get this right this time. So props on to the rescue. I've gone and I've cut this up into 10 centimeter high um, strips. You can see I made a bit of a mistake on this one. <laughs> Uh, but that's fine. Um, I don't need this many. I just figured I'd do it all as 10 centimetres and I can store it and I can use it for other builds. But these are all now close enough for me, absolutely close enough for me. And the other thing that I've realised is, is that this is actually 50 centimetres. So what I'm going to be able to do is m cut 20 centimetres off, which is going to leave 30, and the Proxon is good for a 20 centimetre cut. So I might be able to get away without having to try the, uh, the, the uh, masking tape idea. However, I do want to try it, so I'm going to do it on one, show you how that works, and then if it works fine, I'll, I'll do it on the others. But it's just going to be easier for me to slap my uh, shifting lands uh, uh, fence on and sh 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 cut them all at, uh, at, the, at the correct at the correct size, um, but I'm going to do one with the masking tape. So I'll get that prepared and then I'll show you how well it works. Actually, let me show you how I'm going to do it. So what I've got here is I'm offering this up against the uh, measure that's on the mat underneath. Uh, mark that at 30. And what you're going to need to do for this is you're going to need to mark it all the way around at 30. Otherwise, um, you're not going to get your masking tape straight. And the masking tape being straight is the key here. So what I will do is I will go around and mark 30 centimeters at each corner and then I'll get a straight edge and I will draw in all of those up. So I'll get that done and then I'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, I'll put a mark around, which is just here, which is not gonna be very easy for you to see on the uh, camera, um, but hopefully you will. Um, 
and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with the masking tape as you can see and I'm going to run it along the outside of the cut. So this is the bit I want to keep. Actually you should always do it the other way around. I'm going to run it along the inside of the cut. That is the way you should always do it because then if you slip you're not damaging the bit that you want to keep. So we'll just wrap the masking tape around making sure that it is straight on the line that we're looking at. And there we are. So now I can tear that off. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the Proxon and we'll see whether that cuts straight. So let's see what kind of a fool I'm making myself here. So the idea about this was that you would be able to use it with a hand cutter as well. But this is just as difficult to use manually without a guide, I can tell you. So let's see whether this works. Right, you can see that isn't actually perfect. I think maybe it might be easier if I'd have done it that way. <laughs> so that could have been my technique. Maybe pushing away would have been easier than trying to pull it across. Um, but it has worked. I mean, it has got a relatively straight cut. Um, it's mostly my failure than the technique, I think. I think if I'd have done that, I would have had far more control and far better um, and, and done a better job than doing how I did it. But anyway, I'm going to use the guide to cut the rest. Uh, that's just a bit of an experiment. Um, if you don't have a Proxon, um, then yeah, that'll work. I think especially if you've, if you've got a steady hand and you've got a, a good hot wire cutter, that will work. We have success. They're all the right length. They're all the same size. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> so now we're going to on to step two. Step two is the ceiling tiles. So here we have a big ceiling tile. I've got a pack of these. Each wall section will require three pieces of ceiling tile to give it a distinctive castle wall shape. One should be exactly the same height and width as the wall. The other is about an inch or two and a half centimeters taller and will be stuck to the front. Uh, it is important that these two sections have the beveled edge pointing upwards. The final piece is a thin strip about two and a half centimeters, one inch tall and the full width of the tile across. So when it says full width of the tile, um, that is if you've got foot width tiles. I obviously don't, my tiles are larger, there's my wall um, and as you can see um, the wall is quite substantially uh, less wide than the, uh, narrower is the word I'm looking for, narrower than the, uh, th than the tile. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out and I will take their advice and I will um, Mark it on the back. Mark out the ceiling to rear ceiling tile section by drawing around the polystyrene wall. So let's do that. Um, and there is probably a better way of doing this, to be honest. The better way of doing this will be to mark where you want it, like this. Okay. Get a 90 degree straight edge, which I have just over here. <laughs> Cunningly walk across my room and do that because we need a lot of these so there's no point in like measuring and measuring and measuring and be efficient okay and then you'll better go up to the other end of the tile and draw to match And now for this, what we can do is I can cut that out and I'll be able to get one end, which is the right height. The other side, I'll be able to cut out two inches down and then I'll be able to slice these across as the, oh, two inches, one inch down. And then I'll be able to slice the bit in the middle into inch slices. And that will probably give me enough to do all of those thin strips. Of course, for most of the other ones, um, I'm going to need to have a, t a tile per um, because that's a bit wasteful, though I might be able to fit it in. Yeah, I might be able to get, get away with that um, and have um, one and a half tiles per. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a, a little bit wasteful of, of these tiles. I end up with quite a, lot of weight, quite a lot of spare. But certainly for this first one, I should be able to get my, my wall done both front and back and all the strips for the rest of the build. So I'm going to get that done. I'm probably just going to use a knife, to be honest. This is a uh, 
this, this is a thin to cut and it won't cause a problem with using a sharp standing knife. Um, and I'll bring you back when I've got them all cut out and we're going to look at sticking them on. So we now have these four pieces, uh, which I have uh, cut out nicely. I use the Proxon a bit, and I also use just a sharp knife as well, and they're cut fine. So what I'm going to do now is step three, which is constructing the battlements. So it says, using PVA, stick the thin strip, that one, of the ceiling tile to the top or beveled edge of the longest of the, of the largest piece. So you can see we've got two pieces here, both of them have beveled edges on the top, and this is the one that we want. Um, and what it says to do is stick it so the textured sides both facing outwards. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to stick it like that. Glue this whole section to the main wall so that the thin strip rests on the wall itself. So that means doing that. And then stick the other section with the beveled edge at the top on the back. So that's what we're going to do. Once the wall section is assembled, leave it to dry thoroughly before moving on to step four. So I have six sections like this and two of the shorter sections. You can just see those in the background. I've done them exactly the same um, with the same with the same sizes of cuts. So we're going to stick, do that sticking together, leave it to dry, and then we'll come back and do the next step probably tomorrow. So I will just use PVA like it suggests. There we are. And I'll leave it for a good 24 hours, if not 36, until I touch it again. Because I've had a little bit of re recent problems with the PVA not actually drying, and me getting impatient, and then it not actually being good enough. So that's stuck on there. What we'll now do is put a little bit more PVA on. Less is more. Just put it out nice and thin. Possibly use a old paintbrush rather than your hands. <laughs> there we are. And then last but not least, another smear on there. Spread that around. Now I do use gator glue, so if this ends up not going off, then I can always glue it with gator glue and that will definitely, definitely stick it. There we are. So that's one section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the other five long sections and two short sections like this and then just leave them to dry. Um, and I'll bring you back uh, for the next step when I get to it. So there you are. <laughs> it's a good thing that I have a lot of clamps. And over here, I'm just getting started on the next section, which is the towers, the corner towers. So what I've got here is I've got some six centimeter, which is the dimensions that I use for those walls. I've got some five centimeters, which is the dimensions I use for the incorrectly done walls. And what I've realized is I can't actually use any of these offcuts. Let me explain. These are six centimeters thick. So when they're stuck together, which is how they say to do it, they're going to be 12 centimeters. However, I've cut them out 10 centimeters deep this way. So they wouldn't be square and I want them to be square. So I will put those back in the uh, area where I'm saving them. I'm not going to waste them. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the six centimeter uh, uh, polystyrene and cut it out 12 centimeters thick rather than 10 and then I'll be able to follow the instructions. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me read what these instructions say um, and then, we, then I'll get stuck in. So the towers presented here represent solid stone ones with no interior. In pack 30, so in a couple of weeks, months time, we'll look to build larger towers with removed walls to reveal the interior. So at the basis of the tower is a solid piece of polystyrene made from two rectangular sections. Cut out two equal side rectangles from the five centimeter thick polystyrene. As I say, I'm gonna do it from six. Uh, and it's gonna be 12 centimeters rather than 10, as they say, and they suggest 18 centimeters high. So I'll probably go around that 18 or 20 centimeters, something like that. Then stick them together, basically, and leave them to dry. So I'm gonna to get to that stage uh, and clamp them and leave them, so I won't bother filming that. Um, and I'll bring you back in for the next step uh, when we start to do some cutting um, and a little bit more interest. So the next step on the corner towers, we've got our three blocks and stood up on this one is one of the wall sections. So let me read out what it says. 
Once they're dry, mark a point on any corner that is exactly as high as the wall walk where we're measured from the base of the tower. From this point, draw a 5cm 2 inch line on each side, and then up to the top of the tower. Cut this section out so there is a diagonal section missing from the tower with a small triangular platform at the bottom of it. Uh, and that is how the walkways will continue. So, these are the, four, the three towers. I'll move these two out of the way and we'll have a look at this one in detail. Um, I've randomly picked a wall section and it's the one that is a little bit damaged, but that's fine because what I can do is I can just come along here and draw a line, like so. So that's how far back it's going to go and um, that's how high it's going to be. So we'll do the same on the other side like this, so we'll line that up, like so, and draw it back, like that. Okay, so what I can do now is I can offer this up, upside down, and mark there, and that'll be where I want to go up. And I'll do the same thing here. And oh, well, actually we know that, don't we, because it's there. So then if I get a ruler and draw a line, or get a straight edge of any sort, use this lollipop stick, tongue depressor, and draw that line. We now have somehow, huh, and it says, just do it, it's fine, but yeah. There is no just do it, I don't think. But what we now need to do is cut this out. So cut out down here and across there. Now the challenge is gonna to be to cut in and then up. That's not gonna be the easiest thing in the world. So I'm gonna have a bit of a play around with the Broxon, work out how I can do this without destroying this glued together section. Um, and as soon as I've worked it out, I'll bring you back and we'll do it. So I have come up with a successful way of doing it, and this is the third and final tower to do. I have uh, tested my new technique on another one. First one worked okay, the next one worked much better, so I'm gonna show you how that works. So first of all, what I've done is I've measured out the cutout, which in this case is six centimeters long and 12 centimeters down. So what we're then gonna do is we're then gonna use some masking tape, very similar to the suggestion in, in the magazine, which which didn't work for me before. So I'll get that masked up now. Okay, with that masked up, I'm gonna make use of my hot wire cutter. Now this is the super expensive crazy one, which didn't work for me the first time, but it's working for me now. So what I've done is I've put the temperature down a bit, which makes it a little bit more controllable. And uh, also using the blade, which is only just a little bit longer than the cut I need, which is what it says. Now that I actually have the instruction manual in English, I can read it, and that is one of the things it says. It also says don't cut for too long. Fortunately, I haven't cut for too long with this. But this worked on the last one, so let's see if it's gonna work while the camera's rolling. So we'll heat it up. You can hear the fan pick up, and the little light flashing, and the beeping sound. And once it's up to temperature, it cuts through very quickly. Takes a couple of seconds, and now it's there. And what we're able to do is run down along the masking tape, keeping a nice straight line. Okay, so what it actually suggests you do is you release the lever before you pull out to prevent that little burn that happened there, but this is gonna be okay. I'm still learning the tool, but you should really let go just before you want to re uh, remove the tool and then it should stay just warm enough to remove it and not cause damage. So what we'll do is we'll cut along the bottom. And there we are, we have it cut out. So if you don't have an expensive tool like this, don't worry, because I reckon that with the actual, uh, the uh, hot wire foam factory one that I've got, I could probably do basically the same thing with the same technique and that will work fine. So there we are, I've done it. We have the, uh, we have the tower corners. So let me tidy up here and have a look at the next step. So now the next step is to do the ceiling tiles, the texture. So you will need to cover the outside of the tower with polystyrene ceiling tiles in the same way as for the walls. The sections of the tile should extend about two centimeters, one inch, so the same dimensions for the, as you did for the walls above the, uh, at the top. Remember that two of these tile sections will need to be L-shaped to accommodate the cross section you cut out of the tab and that you should position the ceiling tile sections so the beveled edges point upwards. Use thinner strips of ceiling tile to create double thickness battlements. So it's a very similar technique to on the, um, to, to, to doing the, t the, uh, the walls. Um, what I've got here is a couple of offcuts, um, which I saved, which I'm glad I did, because if you look, this is gonna be a good width 
to do uh, to cut out enough to do the outside walls on one tower and I have two of them so I'm going to be able to do the outside walls on two towers using those offcuts. Unfortunately I don't have any other offcuts of the right size but I do have another offcut that I'll be able to slice up if I need to to get the thin strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure use the proxon to cut a straight line because obviously as you can see all I'm going to need to do is cut that in one go and then trim it down twice and then I'll have the height for the outside so I'll do that and um, we know that this is 12 centimeters so I can do a slice of 12 centimeters and another slice of 12 centimeters and I'll do that four times then for the inside one obviously not on this sheet because I'm going to make use of this one um, for the outside um, I will basically offer it up in the same way and cut around it like that so um, so that's where you're going to be. Obviously it's going to be actually on the outside. Um, so yeah, so you're going to need to have that L shape like it says. And then with a two and a half centimetre or one inch at the top um, for the battlement. So I'll get that done. It's very similar to the walls, so I won't film all of it. Um, I might uh, show what the templates look like before I stick them on. Um, and then we will get on and do the battlements on both walls and towers. Um, which is really, really cool. So, um, yeah, so I'll get this done and I'll bring you along for the next step shortly. So that's all done and here are all the pieces you'll need for one of the towers. So there's two squares, or rectangles even, that will go up the back like that. Then there's mirrors for the L shape. So one goes there and one goes there. And then the Thin strips, you've got two at six centimetres for me or five or whatever, but they're the full width of this to go glued onto there. And then you've got two narrow ones which are half width which can be glued onto there. And that will be done in the same way as the previous, uh, as the walls, so I won't film that. But that's the parts you need, so I've done that three times. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I will glue these on to, I'll glue these thin strips onto the upright. Um, and then glue the uprights onto the walls and I'll weight them down or, or clamp them or something um, and uh, let them dry. So I'll get that done and then I'll bring you back for the next step probably tomorrow now when these are all dried and they're ready for the next step in the process. Well that was harder than I expected <laughs> and I learned a bit. So first of all what I've done is I haven't clamped it as you can see. I've used dressmaker's pins uh, because the clamps were just too heavy. The big clamps that were, bit, that were needed to actually clamp this size were just too heavy and were actually causing problems. So that's one thing I did. The second thing you can see that I have put the small clamps on the top just to hold the battlements on. If you are, are, not ta if you are taking a little bit more time it might be worthwhile sticking those on, letting them dry completely before you go to try to stick them onto the actual tower because what I had not considered and if I turn this to the top you can see that they, they overlap here so on these so you, you actually only want uh, you actually don't want any of the um, inner battlements to be the full width of the outer because they're going to overlap obviously it's obvious when you think about it but I didn't realize until I set it in so what I've done is to clamp them and then I've used a sharp knife just to slice any overlap off as I've been gluing it and it was quite fiddly but I think that's going to be okay so what I'm going to do now is now that's done I'm going to move on to the uh, other two um, I am wondering whether using gator glue is a better idea because it's slightly stronger I'd hate for this all to peel off but I've put quite a few pins in at angles, trying to position them so they won't be obvious. Obviously it'll be being painted as well. Um, but yeah, just a little bit more fiddly than I expected, so I thought I'd quickly show those, those learnings. But it's looking good though, it's coming on nicely. So the next step is to do the crenellations and the embrasures. So crenellations are the distinctive tooth-shaped defences that run along the top of the castle walls. The raised solid parts are called merlins and the gaps are called embrasures. These, along with the top of the wall, make up the battlements. Divide the battlements into 10 or so equal squares. So this is 30 centimetres, so they're going to be 3 centimetres each, or 5 if you're marking out the short walls, and march, mark which will be the embrasures and which will be the merlons. The embrasures should be cut about halfway down the rim of the battlements, so that a model can stand behind them and see over the top. Once the embrasures have been cut out, you can add extra detail by cutting an angled section out of the wall directly below them as shown. So what I'm going to do is, I've got my sharpie here, um, and I've got my, my uh, ruler, and I'm just going to come along and I'm going to dot every three centimetres, 30 millimetres like that. Because that will split my wall up 
as they're describing and I will then be able to work out which I'm going to, oh, 24 there, which I'm going to keep and which I'm going to get rid of. So if I keep this one and get rid of that one and keep this one and get rid of that one and keep this one and then get rid of that one, you can see that that's going to look quite good. There we are. So what I need to do now is come along and actually cut this out. Now I'm probably going to do this with a hot wire cutter I think and I'm probably going to practice before I film <laughs> because I'm not totally sure how I'm, how I'm going to actually achieve it. I am thinking that I might make use of my um, of that new cutter which I'm starting to get the hang of now um, and I reckon that I'll be able to get some good results with that but I do want to practice first. If you don't have a expensive cutter then just a normal hot wire cutter will do this fine as well but I want to really get practiced with that and I think I might even have one tool that will do this in one so a box cutter like a, a, will cut a, a section out like that and, and do it really nicely so I'll just be able to go boop 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 and do it really quickly. So I'm going to try that out and when I'm comfortable I've got lots and lots of this to do obviously then I'll bring you along and I'll show you how it works. So yes, this does have an awesome attachment for making this cutter. So it will take a second or two to heat up. But what you can see is if I just press, push this against the edge of the uh, bench, get it to heat up, <coughs> it's cooled down a bit. And it actually is three centimeters wide. <laughs> it takes a second to warm up. Might actually make it a bit hotter. And it just slices through once it's up to heat. There we are. And then you can quickly peel it out and go along to the next one. Really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for all of these wall sections. Like so. And then I'll come back when I've done it and I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing the angle. Of course, if you don't have one of these attachments, you can just use a normal hot wire cutter. But I'm really trying to get the grips with this tool, which is why I'm using it. And having spent the money on it, I want to get some use out of it. So again, this tool is proving its usefulness. Uh, once again, I'll have to heat it up because it's cooled down. But basically what I'm doing is I'm able to come along and hold this at an angle and just drop it straight down and it carves an absolutely perfect angle obviously it's a bit cool at the moment but once it warms up it's very quick so there we are you have to be a bit careful with your fingers when you're removing it from that little where it got caught but yeah you can see that that is just beautiful and really really quick so now I'm going to go through and do the, all, of, all of them and uh, then that'll be me for the night I think it's getting later than I planned but I've made some good progress and you can see there that we have a nice looking wall section uh, the next section will be to put some uh, kind of like floor tiles and what have you some, some slab, uh, slabs on there so um, I'll bring you along when I get to that as well so the next step is to hide the gaps and put flagstones on top of all of the walls so I've got my um, cutter out my guillotine out and I've just been cutting up some pizza boxes <laughs> and what I'm now going to do is start to stick them onto the top so I've just cut them out in random sizes and this is going to be this seems to be the uh, task that is going to take a lot of time and maybe I'll just do watching a film or something but I'm just going to make a start on it now I've got a few minutes just before I start work so uh, I'm going to paint on some PVA over the top of the wall and then come along and pick the shapes that I've cut and press them down in. So like I say, just pizza boxes and just put them in place like so. And I've done it um, random, I've done it random sizes so there will be gaps but that will be sorted out when we come to do the texturing. Um, so yeah, so I'll get that done. As you can see, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> Even just to do one wall will probably take a couple of minutes. Um, so with all the walls we've got to do, it'll take some time. Um, but it should end up looking really nice. Um, and any anything that I don't manage to fill like that, I will come back to later um, and chop some to size. So I'm not going to worry too much. I'm just going to crack on with this as much as I can. 
uh, in brakes to work and what have you um, and cover all of the walls including the ones that are on top of the towers so yeah this could take some time but it will look really good when it's done let's, uh, let's get on with it so next up we're looking at buttresses Buttresses are stone support struts that reinforce the structure of the outside wall. To make simple buttresses, cut a rectangular piece of 2.5cm or 1 inch thick styrene, approximately 7cm long and 2.5cm wide. That's roughly what I've got here. Then cut it diagonally, basically. Use, it says to use a fine tooth modelling saw, but I will use a very sharp crafting knife. Glue these to the front of the wall so they're fairly evenly spaced. You'll need two long buttresses for each long section, two for each long section and one for each short section. So I have my sharp knife and I have my safety ruler and what I'm going to do is just cut across diagonally like that. So what we'll end up with is two of the same. And I'm going to need to do this a few more times. I'm just doing this on camera with this spare bit. What I might end up doing in the end um, is um, actually using the proxon to do this cut. But because I'm using an off cut, I'm just going to, I'm kind of just hacking this together and don't like wasting. So um, we'll mark out where the, where the cut goes. And then we have our two buttresses. And then I have a long section of wall here. And what I'm going to do is I'll stick one here and I'll stick one there. So I'll use, probably use um, gator glue because this is very likely to get knocked um, and then clamp it in place or weight it in place. But yeah, just a little bit of gator glue on the bottom. And then put it in place like that. So I'll do that for all of the wall sections and for all of the short wall sections. And then we'll come to the next step when that is done. There we are, buttresses. I'm actually skipping ahead a little bit now uh, because technically the next step I should be doing is putting the details onto the towers. So basically wrapping these corners with cardboard. However, I've, um, that's gonna take a while um, and so is this process. So I thought I'd get started on doing the painting and then I can go and do the details on the towers while this is drying because I'm not going to use grout for this. I've decided that I'm going to use my black scenic paint and sand because I want it to have quite a strong texture. So I've got a very, very big brush, which only just fits in. As you can see, Let move that over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the scenic paint, which is PVA black paint, a bit of water and a dash of washing up liquid, dish soap for the Americans. Make sure it's dish soap and that keeps the uh, keeps it from molding going off and what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint the whole thing black like this and then throw sand on top and then let it dry and then i have to turn it over so as you can see it's just going to be a bit of a laborious process to get this all done so get this started and then i can uh, go over and do some more cardboard detailing so i won't film the whole process um, but this is basically what you do. And it gives a good texture. Very, very easy texture. And it dries quite quickly. So you can literally empty that off right away now into the bucket. And you've got a good amount of texture on there as you want it. So I'm going to do the rest of the build like that. Uh, as I said, it'll take a little bit of time um, and uh, I'll bring you back to show you what this looks like when it's finished, but I'll probably now cut over to doing the cardboard details as well. So I made a right mess before doing that uh, sand work and not doing it very smartly. Uh, and in the time I've been doing this, I've worked out a better way. So I thought I'd quickly show you. So I have the same paint as before. It's just black. Uh, house paint mixed with PVA and water. Um, what I'll do actually is I'll just give that a quick, a quick shake to get it all mixed up. When you're shaking paint, make sure that the lid is on properly. I better wash up. 
that was a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of an oops, made a bit of a mess there. But anyway, so this is how I'm now going about doing this and it's working out much, much better than uh, attempting to kind of like scatter and then empty over. So I come along and basically paint and I do a, a much thinner coat than I said before of the black paint. So rather than lo loading it up with black paint, just paint it on, not massively thin, but not so it's dripping off like I did before. So I'll get that done. There we are. So once you've, uh, once you've done that, then what we're gonna do is I'll pick it up, I will hold it over the top of the bucket, move that a little bit closer, and then just literally let it fall down, straight back into the bucket and fall down over the front of the, of the wall. And that way, you can see it sticks on, it doesn't cause a huge mess, and it's much quicker. I've still got the, sat the uh, paper down just in case, but there we are, that has got a nice texture to it now. So, I'm gonna go back to watching the uh, Starship, which is currently very close to docking uh, at the International Space Station. Um, so I'm gonna put the, the sound back on on that, uh, and I'm gonna continue working. I have all the walls done now, apart from this one front wall, um, and then um, I haven't actually yet got around to doing the cardboard on the uh, towers, because um, this, this was just so involved um, and such a, a long process. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm making some good progress as you can see, uh, but I'm nearly, nearly done, so I'm going to finish that now um, and I'll bring you along for the next step, which will be the cardboard when I get to it. So next up we're going to look at doing the guides or the, the filling in of the gaps around the outside of these towers, which is actually going to take quite a bit of time as well. <laughs> I'm going to be pushed to finish this by the, uh, by the target, but I'm, I'm going to carry on. Even if I don't completely finish it, I will have done most of it, I think. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've got myself and eyeballed a, um, a rough size for the smaller of the um, the smaller of the, of the stones that are going to go around the edges. Uh, just using this as a template so that I cut lots that are roughly the same size, and that can go, then get stuck on basically around the the outside of this of these joints. So there's going to be a joint here. There's three on each tower, joint there and a joint there. So I've got a bunch of these that are roughly the right length. And I'm gonna keep cutting those out now. And what I'll also do um, is I will cut out some slightly longer ones. So let me just show you how I'm going about them. Literally just as simple as hold the template in place and cut just a little bit bigger because I want it actually a little bit bigger than that. And that's gonna give me enough that are gonna be roughly the same size. So I'll make a load this size. And then what I will do is I will also make a load that are bigger. So let me just show you just how accurate I'm going to be on this. So we're going to go roughly that big. There we are. So now I've got another template there, which I'm going to be able to use to cut out the larger stone facing stones. So I'll get this done. Um, and then what I'm probably going to do is glue them in two stages or more. I mean, this is what's going to take the time is the drying time uh, because they're going to need to be glued and secure um, both front, uh, both both sides. And most glues are not going to do that instantly. That won't then melt this <laughs> polystyrene. So that's going to be a challenge. But I'll get to that, and I'll bring you along and show you how I do it. For now, it's just going to be a case of cutting these out um, and getting enough ready. As expected, this is proving to be quite a uh, slow and tedious process. So I thought I'd quickly show you what I'm doing. I've got my uh, premix polyfiller here. <clears throat> which I really, really like actually. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm actually coming along and filling in the corner because there's quite a big gap um, and that's going to mean that the pieces that I'm trying to glue on aren't really going to stick very well. So I come along with my little palette knife um, and filling this gap in. don't need quite that much. And I'm trying to get it so that it actually is at is, is a 90 degree corner rather than being smooth. So it kind of takes a little bit of time to do that. This is one I've just finished doing. So what I'm then gonna do um, is throw my palette knife on the floor. So I'll come along with some PVA glue and I am gonna have to do this in two stages. So I run the PVA glue in a bead down the top. There we are. And then I have my pre-folded 
bits of cardboard, so I'll take a short one and a long one and a short one and a long one and do that all the way down the corner and then when I've done that I will move the camera and show you over there you can see that's when I've finished um, or finished I've got ready so I'll put a weight on the top so that it holds those cardboards in place and when that's dried which will take a good couple of hours then I will rotate um, and then I'll be able to do two sides at once because if I move the camera back down so what I'm going to be able to do once I've done this side and I turn it onto the front I can glue this and also the other corner down the bottom here so uh, yeah it's going to take a bit of time um, but I want it to be right so I'm just going to do it right so I'm going to carry on with this uh, once everything is glued in place then I'll do the same paint and sand and what have you as I've done in the other ones so the next time you see these they should be pretty much completed while I'm working on those corner pieces which is slow going I have two other processes that I need to do on the rest of the walls and I can demonstrate that with these two so first of all on the right hand side I have one that's ready for a second coat of the black paint to go over the sand so that's pretty obvious just get the uh, get the paint open if I can I did clean that there we go that's better I'm trying to get better at keeping the tops of my jars clean, clean because if I don't then they get completely stuck so anyway all that will be is coming along with the black paint watered down black paint PVA mix and paint it over the whole thing and this will do two things it will make it black obviously but it will also bind and seal in the sand so that when we come to dry brushing it's like cement rather than it actually rubbing off when you're actually doing your dry brushing so I'm going to do that to every uh, wall that I can right now and some of them I can't right now so I will show you why on the other wall section that I have here so I'll come back to painting that in a second and I'll just crack on through this what I've got here is a wall section that needs a little bit more work you can see that there's a gap it doesn't look huge but it certainly is annoying enough for me um, and the reason there's a gap is when I glued these on using the gator glue I did not weight down the top corner enough so I weighted the bottom which is fine but it meant that it pulled forwards because gator glue actually expands so it pulled forwards so what I'm going to have to do first of all I've tried to fix it with the sand and it just hasn't worked so what I'm going to have to do is I've got some wood filler here that I'm just going to come along and I'm going to smooth out and join that up now what that means is obviously that I'm going to need to wait for that to dry before I can come along with my sand and paint again and then wait for that to dry and then come along with the black paint to fill in the uh, to cover it over and make it all, all dark so I kind of wish I'd spotted this or more more honestly wish I'd actually done the right fix rather than try to hack it with with the with the sand pouring the sand into the gap but it is what it is there's actually quite a lot like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along going to fill in these gaps on any that need it leave it to dry and then come and do the next steps which will be paint and sand let that dry and then more paint um, and any that I can paint black I will paint black so I get all that done and uh, yeah we're, we're nearly up to the dry brushing stage so I'll bring you back for these when I'm at that dry brushing stage Right, let's talk stairs so what they describe is basically just some straight stairs going up with a couple of platforms to get to the top now I've decided to do something a little bit different I'm not doing an advanced build in this video uh, I haven't had time and nor have had the inclination and I know what I'm gonna do next month so um, so this is basically my advanced bit so what I've done is I've gone away and done a few bits of drawing and I've decided that I'm gonna have two stairways going up to a platform and then have the final little bit of stairway coming across so there's a bit of a tunnel uh, uh, behind the, this block um, which potentially could be storage or what have you um, and the stairs will be cut in like this so what I'm about to do now is go and cut these shapes in using the proxon um, and then I'll do the final steps which I'll show you how I'm going to do um, on, on this one so this will have the final steps will be basically like this there we are so it will be two ways up wide enough to 
uh, for two models to be, to be side by side uh, and will continue will be quite good to play on. Now, this is heavily influenced by watching Lucky from Zorba Zorba's video about um, stairs that he did a couple of weeks ago, which I'd highly recommend you go and watch as well. I will attempt to remember to pop a link in the uh, top corner, uh, but go and check him out. Really, really interesting discussing how stairs can influence battles, and so that's why I've done it this way. So thanks for that inspiration, Lucky. That's brilliant. So I'll get this cut. Uh, I will then glue it together, and I will then do the same texturing as I've done for this. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put the um, put, put any of of the cardboard flags on or not. Probably not. Uh, you can barely see them with the texturing I've done. So I'll get that done. Hopefully, that'll be very quick. The final thing to do before we go into dry brushing is making some wooden ladders. So I'll bring that to you next. Now comes the time for the magic. It's the grey dry brush. So what I've got is I've got my, my darker grey and I'm going to go over the whole of every single piece with that, <coughs> which will take some time. And then once that's done, <coughs> I do this as quite a heavy one. Uh, I want the basically the stone to be grey with just some dark highlights left behind. As you can see, that's quite grey already, um, hopefully you can see. Uh, and then when that's done, I'll come along with a lighter grey and then potentially at the end with a white. But uh, yeah, as you can see, when I'm doing this first one, I'm not actually really dry brushing as such. I am taking some of the paint off on a bit of kitchen roll but I want to put quite a lot on the model because I want it to be grey, not black. So yeah, get that done. It'll take some time. Do it slowly through today, I think. And then uh, we'll come along with a lighter grey and get that done as well. And then we're pretty much finished, apart from I need to make some ladders, which I will do very, very shortly. There we are, that's the first half section done. And if I put that next to one that's not done, you can see the difference. Right, let's talk about ladders. Axis ladders can be made from the spare pieces of bamboo skewers. <laughs> now, as you remember from last month where I did the build of the Rohan Palisade, I ended up with lots and lots and lots of bamboo skewers. Here is my bag of offcuts that I saved at the end of last month. And this is why you should always save your materials because you will almost always find a use for it and waste is a bad thing. So anyway, for each ladder, cut two skewers into approximately seven centimeter, three inch lengths to make the side struts. The runs are made from short two and a half centimeter lengths. So let's pull one of these out and offer it up. And you can see that that's gonna be absolutely perfectly long enough to go from this platform to there. So I would probably rather offer up than measure because then you know that what you're gonna get is gonna be correct. I'll make it just a little bit longer so that it pops out over the top. There we are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut six set lengths at this length here because that's going to mean that I've got a ladder for each of my towers. Now it's suggesting that we use the round um, offcuts of the bamboo skewers, but I don't think I'm going to do that actually. What I have here are some matchsticks that don't have any sulfur on them. And so I think I'm probably going to make use of these and I'm going to make the ladders quite wide because then um, we can put our miniatures um, and they will balance. So I'm not going to make it a very narrow ladder. I'll probably get myself some 28 millimeter miniatures and work out the width and I'll let you know what that is when I've done it. So what it then says is basically glue the rungs between the side struts to finish the ladder. Don't stick them in place on the model as you may need to move them around during the battle games. Which does make sense. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some, uh, I'm going to cut these lengths now um, and then I'll work out a width and then I'll show you how I'm going to go about gluing them together and then we'll stain them up and then that is the final process. I'm still working on the dry brushing as you can see. Um, I've got to do the lighter grey dry brush next as well. Um, but yeah, very close to finished. So as you can see, I've assembled one. I'm about to assemble my second ladder. I thought I'd uh, do a bit of a practice run and then show what I've learned. So basically, 
what I'm doing is I'm cutting about um, about five mil or so off of a matchstick to get the correct width. Then I've got my exemplar here. Um, what I'm doing is I've just gone along and I have um, measured that against uh, 10 because there's 10 rungs per ladder and done a little pencil mark. I've then got this awesome scissors and it's really really easy it's got a little kind of notch in the blade and it's really really easy for me to come along and snip off each one to the right length. Now I do have the chop it which I very rarely use now because this is just easier. So if you can manage to get yourself some, some great scissors like these, I don't know um, if you will. I think I bought these in Belgium when I first ever started on this terrain journey. I think these were picked up in Belgium and I thought I picked some rubbish ones <laughs> because it was the only ones they had in the shop. So there we are. So if you can find some like this, I'd highly recommend them. They've been superb for me for so many different applications particularly for doing this as you can see look at how easy it is there's no spoinging going on at the wood falls down onto the mat nicely and tidily um, and it's not hard on my fingers so anyway there we are so that's 10 done and then what i'm doing is i'm gluing it in place with super glue at first so uh, what i do is i put a dip of a dot of super glue on the bottom on each side that was a little bit too much but it'll be okay and then put the bottom rung on and get that lined up nicely. Make sure that it's not going to actually stick to the to the tray. And then what I do is I put a little dot of super glue at the top. That was a much better amount. <laughs> and then I put the top rung on. And that now will be enough to hold the whole thing roughly straight while I come along and do the rungs in the middle. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. So, um, and as I say, there's gonna be 10 rungs per ladder. So it takes a bit of time, but it's not a huge amount of time. I won't make you watch all of that, but that's how I'm going about doing it. So I'm gonna make three ladders. So once I've done this one, I'll do another one. Um, and I'll bring you along for the next step, which will be probably, I'm probably gonna paint PVA over them as well. Uh, just to completely and utterly make sure they don't fall apart. Um, but I'll probably do that after I've stained them. So I'll bring you along for those processes. So I've left those overnight, just because it was late last night when I, when I finished on them. They actually probably were pretty much set within uh, 20 minutes or so, and you could have done this step then. What I've got now is I've got some African teak wood stain, which is literally just the wood stain you'd use if you were staining up your deck or whatever. And I'm going to paint this over using a very old brush that I don't care about over the, all of these uh, ladders. So it will take a little bit of time because they're a little bit, they're quite small. You're not able to go in big brush strokes. But once it's set, which it does go off quite quickly, it will give it a really nice colour of old dark wood that's maybe been pre-burned to harden it against uh, attack from a... And flames so uh, yeah like a uh, like you'd expect your siege and defensive wood to look it's not going to be clean and pale so yes yeah, so I'll get that done um, and then the final step on these will be just checking how hardy they are and if they need to have a bit more PVA added to them to secure them now it's time for a dry brush of the lighter grey which I'm going to do is a lighter dry brush. Just looking to catch the edges and anywhere that will get a highlight from the sun hitting it. So it's not so much a colour as actually just highlighting the edges. And it works really, really nicely, particularly on the front of these where you've got quite a few sharp edges that maybe would be catching the sun or at least a slight increase in light. So I'm going to get that done over all of them. Uh, and then we'll wrap the video up because we're done. And here it is, all done. And uh, assembled with the required gap for the gate and for the main corner tower, which I'll be doing next month. So there it is. It is a large old 
castle actually. There's a fair amount of space in it. This table is four foot by four foot. So you can see that, yeah, it is taken up basically the whole of the table. Uh, if you're gonna have any kind of besieging troops, um, you're really not gonna be able to fit them on a four by four. This is only gonna be good for a six by four, I think, which is pretty impressive for how easy it was to make and how cheap as well, just with off cuts and uh, a little bit of paint and you're done, it doesn't take much at all. So yeah, really, really pleased. The uh, I don't think that the ladders are going to be secure enough without being actually attached uh, for you to actually have miniatures standing on them because they're a little bit wibbly wobbly on those flagstones which are a bit uneven. But other than that I think everything else has worked really really nicely. I particularly like the details that I, I say this often but I probably wouldn't have bothered putting those corners on and as I was doing it I was thinking you know I could just have done the filler and painted it. But with those little corner details on it, it just adds something and it really does bring the whole of the build up. So I'll get some pictures and then we'll wrap this build up. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have um, and I'll see you after these photographs. Well, there we are. It turned out to be quite an epic build that and a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm already looking forward to next month. I have a couple of ideas for advanced builds that I'm gonna do, which are gonna be really cool. One of which is finishing a project I'd already started and one of which is starting and hopefully finishing a project. So it should be an epic next month. So hopefully you'll join me for that. And that will then complete this castle, which is, which is looking great. Well, nearly completed. I think there might be one month after as well, uh, doing the um, doing the keep inside the castle with the curtain walls, which is what we've built this time round. But anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, have you done anything like this before? Have you built this project before from this magazine? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I always enjoy reading every comment and I do reply to all of them, so don't be shy. Uh, do make yourself known. It'd be wonderful to hear from you. Um, and just let me know if you like it or not. Uh, at the end of the day, um, I do this for the fun, uh, but I do also like to hear whether people like it or if there's things they would like to see improved. So let me know. I'll wrap up by saying thank you so much for getting this far, if you have got this far. And please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.